Good afternoon. My name is Doug Briggs. I'm with Bay Maples Wild California Gardens. And we are back. We've got our Aqualoop system in. And we just wanted to show how the different components are working and what it's doing here. This <coughs> is the system. The water comes in this way. This is called a pure rain filter. The water comes in here, it is filtered, and it fills up this tank. We have our little growth bodies. It's like a little substrate and little bacteria and whatnot. It just gives quite a bit of surface area for things to grow onto. I, I think they're microscopic, but whatever it is actually would consume the soap and skin and whatever might be coming out of your shower. And that, along with the aeration, is what cleans up the water. I mean, this is very similar to a wastewater treatment plant that you would find at a chemical manufacturer in New Jersey. It's really quite a sophisticated operation here. And in fact, Aqualoop is the only residential gray water system that has an NSF 350-C rating. And what that means is that this system cleans up the water to such a degree that there is adequate biological oxygen, there's a lack of turbidity, there's no bacteria, and there are a lack of suspended solids, so that this water then, unlike most other gray water systems, can be stored for more than 24 hours and used for things like toilet flushing and going back into a washing machine. This water, once it is cleaned up, we are sending it over to this tank, and this is where it's being stored. So we are storing here, and then you can see, see we have a pump here, and this pump is hooked up to the irrigation system. And so when our controller kicks on, and says, please irrigate zone one for 20 minutes. Our pump kicks on. It's taking water from here and irrigating our landscape. This is the inside of our storage tank. You can see the blue and yellow float switch there. Because it is parallel, it is telling our system that this tank is full so that no more water will be sent to the tank so that it won't ever overflow. Additionally inside you can see a red sort of hinged valve. That is a makeup water valve and so were this entire tank to become empty there is a little weight on the bottom of that valve. It would open up that valve and municipal water would enter the tank until that began to float again. That way we always have water in the tank, so were the family to go on vacation and they're not generating any gray water, we're keeping water in the tank so that their irrigation can go on and they don't have a problem of, you know, losing their landscape just because they're on vacation. This is just the controller. It's just like any irrigation controller that you would have on your property. The only difference is that the water going to that valve is coming from our storage tank and it's being pressurized by our pump instead of it, you know, being the water coming from the municipal system that you're getting, which is pressurized by the city. And so, um, yeah, this is just the same components and the valves are the same components as on any system. Because this water is being cleaned to a level, a level which is NSF 350-C, um, we are going to actually use these overhead sprinklers to water this lawn. That's all fine because of the degree to which the water has been cleaned. Most gray water systems, you cannot do overhead spray. It has to be discharged underneath mulch, and um, there's no storing the water for more than 24 hours, and you really wouldn't want to because it actually gets quite nasty. Additionally, we will be irrigating through emitter tubing and whatnot out here, 
And again, because there are no solids or bacteria and whatnot in our water, there, we don't have to use a special kind of gray water emitter tubing. We can use basically anything off the shelf. Not at this installation, but at others, we are doing subsurface copper tubing from Rainbird, putting out water from the aqua loop to water a Carapia lawn. And again, we can use the Rainbird product because the water is cleaned up sufficiently.